we thank you the miracles are here the chains are broken the addiction's broken right now father god that mindset just got pulled out father god that that i cannot get past this point you just did that god is leading you out of that dark place and he's saying your time is now your salvation is now your healing is now your redeemer is now right now right now we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the best. You are the most wonderful. You are the most glorious. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you do in us, through us. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our minds. Have your way in our lives. May we be totally, 100% surrendered in every area for you. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Right now, have your way. Bless our pastors. Bless our apostle. Bless what's happening over there in, a, in Australia right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you, Father. Refresh them, bless them, increase them, bring them out even mightier. And Father God, stronger. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you, Father, for your protection. Your angels around them over there, Lord. Your angels here. You go everywhere we go. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, Father God, for that, that, that multitude of angels, even in the house this morning, the multitude of angels that are worshipping with us. Lord, the multitude of heaven that is joining us right now. Father God, you're here. You're, Father God, you're here and you're just wanting every part of us, Lord. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. What an awesome worship team we've got. Beautiful worship team and beautiful church and you are just the most incredible church and I have watched, I've just watched this year so many rise up, so many conquer the areas of their life, so many um, do the hard mahi this year and, and just see so much fruit in people's lives and I'm, a, I'm proud of you, pastor's proud of you, our pastors are proud of you for just a mighty church that you are and that just that you put your hand to the plow and you just keep going and you keep and you do what our apostle asks and you, you turn up and you do it even if it's uncomfortable. You're an incredible church. I just felt like even Pastor's post this morning, he said he's missing us and that he's proud of us and that he loves us and he loves being with us and he's missing us this morning. That's our pastor's hearts, isn't it? So incredible. Um, Make sure that you pray for them while they're over there, that it feel like they've gone five days, but it may it feel like weeks that they get refreshed because I know they've got things to come back to do, so they couldn't stay longer. But pray that every minute of the day is longer than that they could imagine because God can stop time, and, and, and he, God can do anything. So what we're talking about today is a walk on fire. So we're going to talk about fire. We're going to talk about miracles. We're going to talk about our God. It's always an honor to stand up and to talk, like to be asked by pastor to preach is always nerve-wracking, but at the same time, it's such an honor to, that I want to bring a word that would um, bless the house and bless our pastor, and uh, I, you don't take it lightly when you get ready to preach, it's this house, you people, I love, you know, we love you, and we serve you, and we work in the office to love and to serve you, and, and um, just... You know, we fall in love with the people in here, and 
that's the word I want to bring is I hope it brings something to encourage you this morning and I hope it brings something to heal you and um, I, often it's from my heart. So, But this is my life, is it's a walk on fire. And particularly this year, we've had to walk into situations even more on fire and go, Holy Ghost, what are we going to do in this one? And um, we've had to go and get the ones that have fallen back and gone back into the old lifestyle and we've had to we've wanted to go and get them and we wanted to lift them up and we've heard the most impossible situations we've heard the most impossible heartaches and legacy this year that I think there's nothing that surprises me any longer when I hear it downs me when I do so um yeah I'll share a bit of those on on this way but God's fire translates into passion it's also a refiner's fire so God's the fire is passionate. It's that passion that you get when you get out, out there and you share your faith. And it's also a refiner's fire that gets rid of some things along the way. It's also God's presence and also the fire brings a judgment as well in it. So God used the fire in the Old Testament and he, there was fire in the New Testament in the way of the tongues of fire. So um, Psalms 29.9 says, God makes his ministers a flame of fire. That's a flame. So that means that I, when I'm around someone, I'm warming things up. I'm not there for, like a cold fish that swims in a sea, and, and they just their blood is cold. You know, when I turn up, I bring fire. And I, I teach the legacy ladies that when we turn up into legacy, we're bringing fire for these women. We're warming up the woman to the name of Jesus Christ. We're warming them up to get their healing. We're warming. We're bringing the fire and the power of God to bring about salvation, number one. We're bringing salvation to them their hearts will be feeling it we're bringing healing to them we're bringing miracles to them we're bringing uh the most astounding things and the fire the fire burns it's attractive it removes and it but it also can go go out so fire we need to keep our fire as a church the the works you can get busy serving and doing the works and miss the the time alone with God and the fire you could be you could be achieving such incredible things but not walking in fire like you could be talking to God every day but not refilling that fire because we get baptized in fire and it's our job to keep that fire it's our job to feed that fire it's our job to do that we can't just uh, do it like a magic wand there is a baptism of fire but then it's our job to keep the fire burning so that we burn for others we burn for souls we burn for Jesus we burn to be with them we burn to get up late at night we burn to stay up we burn to get up at three o'clock this morning you know we burn because we burn for him we burn with that, that, that just that passionate like salvation that passionate love of Jesus Christ that you feed your fire that we're torches to the world that we are that light to the world that we you know when Ruth and I we even went out for the political thing and we and we stood there and and we didn't want to go. We kind of timed it, but we did it because that's what Pastor asked. That's what our apostle asked. We went and we stood on the streets. We were the torch for some people that walked along that day. We weren't there just for political. We took man up legacy. We took we took God onto the street. We stood in Richmond and we, we ended up praying for someone on the street that when she was walking past, I could see she was in pain by just the look on her face. I asked her, are you in pain? And she goes, yes. How did you know? And I said, I just know. I said, but I know someone who can heal that pain. Would you like prayer? And she goes, well, I believe in something else, another kind of light. And I knew which one. And I said, well, I don't care about that. I believe in Jesus Christ. So can I lay hands on you? She said, oh, okay. So she stood in the middle of the street of Richmond. Here's Ruth and I with the fire of God, the passion of God, doing a political thing. Some of you have not been happy about the political thing. But by crikey, that political thing launched us into, the, into a people group we would have never reached. So we prayed on the street for that lady and we gave her a legacy brochure. As she ran away, I ran after her because I think the fire of God just hit her. And she's like, whoa, I've just got to get away from them. And she just said, I've got to go. I said, and I ran after her. Here's a legacy. If you ever need us, give us a call. And we had multitude times at like, like different times. But we brought the fire. We brought the laughter. We, we even got called 
some names on the street by a 60-year-old woman that were walking past. And um, we, we just smiled back and they had to look back and go, why aren't they getting upset? Why aren't they? Because we had the fire. We had the passion. We got the fire, you know. So we got the power. So, you know, we came with that. We come with that in legacy. We come with that in our life. We come with that in the supermarket. You can come with that in your job. You can bring fire into your job at lunchtime. You could be sitting there and you're pulling on the fire of God. You're filled up. You've had your tank filled in the morning. You've been in the Word. You've been in worship. You've been fasting. You've been getting your 40 days worth of what am I going to change? And you bring that change into your workplace. So um, spiritual fires beyond comprehension. Jesus came to bring the Holy Ghost in fire. And like other situations where we've gone in and we've had, had ladies that have wanted to go back on the pipe and we've turned up because we know it's a desperate day and you stand at the door and you grab hold of them. This is what we've been doing and we've been and going, I bind in my spirit. I'm, I break the, the spirit of addiction. I'll start saying it out loud and Holy Ghost and fire upon them and they feel the presence of God. And they get free as we hug them. You reckon those hugs that you've been getting in legacy, they're a bit more. We intentionally hug and go, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for touching that person and healing that person and restoring that person. May they feel the Holy Ghost. We had a lady come to Boundaries and she was checking out the auditorium, thinking about coming, but somehow she'd seen like a uh, video online, someone videoed me delivering someone. It was quite an extreme deliverance. Anyway, she'd seen that, so she met me in boundaries, and so she was freaking out a little bit. But So when I went to hug her, I went, holy ghost, inside of me. I didn't say that one out loud, and she just went, whoa, like that. She nearly fell on the ground, and she shook her head. She shook her head like this, and she stood up like kind of. I better go, but she just had the presence of God just fell on her, because I carry it, you carry it, we carry it, we forget when we hug people, when we touch people, when we talk to people, you know, pat on the shoulder, holy ghost, thank you Lord, fire on that person, may they feel your presence, may they know your presence, it's an exciting life when you walk every day like that, so Jesus taught us that, Jesus walked that way. And he gave us the Holy Spirit as our central headquarters in our life. I love that. The like apostle said, it's our central headquarters in our life, the Holy Spirit. So feed it. To feed it, not feed him. Feed him. Talk to him. Like feeding the, is reading in the word, but it's talking to him as a friend. The Holy Spirit is my best friend. He's there in the hardest of times. He's there when I've got no one else. He's there when I need an answer. He's there all the time. So when you re receive Jesus as Lord, you got the Holy Spirit in you. You got baptized in him, and he's there. But many people have the Holy Spirit, but they haven't been talking to him, and they haven't been asking him what to do in their lives. And this decision or that decision, I ask. I ask my pastor. I ask the Spirit of God. And I ask for confirmation on big, major decisions in my life. I don't do it without that. So make sure you're doing that. Luke 12, 49 says to 50, I have come to set the world on fire. This is Jesus. And I wish it already were burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead. Isn't that awful? This is the NLT, T, New Living Translation, ahead of me. And I'm under heavy burden until it's accomplished. Basically, he is saying, I've come to set the world on fire. Not just to have like a chitter chatter or walk, walk through your day and just leave them aside the, re at the rest of the day, but to set your fire amongst the men that you walk with every day and people that you walk with every day. That's what he came to do. That fire means to have a strong faith, have a strong faith in every situation. Bring faith in every situation that you're facing, you bring faith. Not just yourself, not just your good deeds, not just your wisdom, your own wisdom, but bring his fire and bring his wisdom. And it says in the New King James Version that he was distressed about that burden that he had to carry. The burden was to bring, the burden was a terrible death. The burden was a terrible baptism that he had to go through with death on the cross, be beaten 
to just about to death, to be hung on a cross, to die on the cross, to be crucified so that he could leave the Holy Spirit and fire behind for you. That was a distressing moment for him. That What he carried was the sin of mankind. That's distressed him. He carried a heavy burden that he needed to accomplish. And knowing that you were born to die, a most horrific death for all mankind, knowing that you were in the most perfect place with God, the Son of God, and God, you were up there, you came down. He came down. He came down. So we don't play church. Uh, we don't forget him through the day. He came down to carry our burdens, to carry our sin, to carry our lost souls back to heaven with him, to, to introduce us to him here on earth, to carry his presence in us daily. He came down for us to receive all of that. What the most perfect God we've got, most, the most loving God that he is willing to come down for your sake, for your soul, to introduce you to himself to carry every sin that you've ever done, every mistake you've ever done. Every time you haven't, you've stuffed up, every time you haven't forgiven you, he's already forgiven you. And so many I work with have not forgiven themselves for their mistakes. And God says, you are forgiven today. You have not let yourself off the hook. And that's why you're wanting to go back to the drugs. That's why you're wanting to find a relationship, is you've not forgiven yourself for your mistakes. So you think taking a pill or taking that man, or taking that, that, that pipe will fix my pain. It won't. It will lead another life of hell for you and your kids. It will take everything and leave you with nothing. Jesus died so you can conquer that very addiction today. If you're still holding on to the pipe, if you're still holding on to any addiction or pornography or anything in here that you're holding on to, God, Jesus Christ died so you can get free from all of that, free from your attitude, free from your anger, free from your rage, free from your, your, your thoughts of death, free whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The Holy Spirit, sorry, there was no transfusion of blood, but a transfusion of the impouring of the Holy Spirit. So we had a trans, oh, just get to know him this week. I, I really challenge you to get to really talk with him and say, what do you want me to do today, Lord, when you wake up in the morning? What do you want, where do you want me to go? And it's not like this big noise. It's very quiet. And it's just a little kind of, oh, you should ring that person. I get lots of that. Ring that person. That person's struggling. Send a message. That person's struggling and an encouragement that day. Or I'll bump into them in the supermarket and they'd be in my mind. And they said, oh, it's funny. I was thinking about you and they're not even saved. And that God's already putting you on their mind. So Jeremiah 29 says, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire. It doesn't the word just burn in you? It's probably burnt already a little bit. So shut, it shut up in our bones. I was wary of holding it back. He doesn't want us to hold back the word or hold back the truth or hold back. He wants us, it burns. The word of God should burn in your bones today. It should convict. It should cause you to want to change. It, it should cause you to want more of him. That, that burns in your bones. The word burns in our bones. I am fire on the earth, he says. We carry both light and heat warms the hearts of, of God's people and causes them to burn within. He's heat. He's light. You are heat and you are light because you carry him. You are heat. Someone's heat. I remember when I was first um, taken out to be told that God was real and it was a Jew that took me out and he was an American Marine. And we went to a jazz bar, and, he, and he, he just said these words to me that, do you believe in God? And I said, no, because I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I tried. I talked to God. Well, I found, you know, I went to some Christian camps now and then or something, but I didn't understand him, didn't, didn't hear his voice, and just took one word from him to say, come on, there's got to be something. When he said, do you believe in God? I said, nah. It was a real strong Nah. And he said, oh, come on, there's got to be something. I don't remember any other words that night, but there's got to be something. And, you know, it doesn't have to be this big, like, 
preach, it can be, oh, come on, do you believe in God? Have a conversation with someone. And, and that was enough for two weeks later. There was a couple of others that told me, and then I got saved reading Revelations, of all things. I went and bought a Bible and read Revelations and was crying on my knees, giving my life to Jesus Christ and thinking of every other soul that needed to know Jesus Christ as well at that time in my floor of my flat in Mount Victoria. That was within two weeks, one word from a Jewish American guy saying, do you believe in God? doesn't take much. When your heart's ready, there was fire in that word. So we are that fire on earth. We bring the warmth, we bring the hearts of the people, and we cause them to burn as well. Those who will be saved feel the burn. We're either attractive or we annoy them. And we do. I know I do. So, you know, we either we can warm them, but then we can irritate them, they're demons. So we irritate people's demons when we're on fire as well. I guess I've never had so many messengers through Messenger this year from random people attacking me through legacy, through just random, wow, I didn't expect that. And I thought, wow, I must be really on fire. It didn't bother me. You know, I was like, okay, I must be, must be bothering a few people. Yeah, man, social media, they can get nasty. But I forgave them. Yeah, that's their problem. May they come to Jesus. Uh, fire purifies, consecrates, destroys, and brings judgment. The opposite is true for those who are not wanting God and are wicked men. They don't want to be around us. It's fire and judgment when they're around us. So that's why people get prickly. That's why they get irritated around you. Or they're about to get saved as well. So people can actually get irritated because God's actually, the presence of God's there and they're getting irritated by your very presence. So, um, as I said before, fire purifies, consecrates, destroys, and brings that judgment. So, you, you just remember that. Don't take it personal. Stop taking things personally. Think of the spirits behind it. I, I, um, we just um, purchased a property, and um, it was, a, it was a, t a hand of God all over it. Like, just every step, God was just in it. And it was amazing how many, um, the biggest comment that um, a thing came back when we went to ring family member and, and it, the re response wasn't great, but we got off the phone and Andy was quite surprised and I just said, oh, there's this, he, he wants it himself. He would love that himself. And it's just that jealousy thing. And then the next day I got a message from that family member and he congratulated us it's the day night before he didn't. And but he, I said, oh Andy had always wanted land and to grow crops, like to burn, you know, and have chickens. Got chickens coming. Um, not sure if I'm that and great about that one, but there you go. Um, you can come and see my chickens if you want. Um, but anyway, the, the um, next day he sends me, sends me a message, but I, I, I knew why and what was behind it. The congratulations, I said, oh, and I said, what Andy want? And then the message came back, oh, that's always what I wanted. He always wanted what we just got. And I said, did you know that there will always be a room for you in our home? So it kind of just that love went beyond, I'm annoyed with my, you know, the person that said it. It was, I love you, and there will always be a place for you to be in our house. <laughs> that is our response. There's always something behind that, that negative comment. I've learned over years, don't take it personal. It's hard sometimes. They are hard. They come hard when they're closer. But I actually look at the more, more you grow in God, the more you look at the spirit behind it. They actually, that's their stuff. The more you're in legacy, you look at the spirit more than the, the person and why they do what they do, why they act like they do. Um, yeah, so Elijah, this is a man of God I wanted us to look at this morning in the Word of God. And it's in um, 1 Kings. And he is a man that walked by fire, moved by fire, called down fire, um, went to glory in fire, <laughs> he moved in the fire, of, he pulled down the fire of God. So in Elijah, 
had a showdown basically in the scripture with some prophets. There was about 450 of them, and they were basically trying to um, show off and, and their gods and get their gods, everybody to follow their god, not the god. And Elijah had had enough, and he confronted it. 1 Kings 18, 21, we'll start there. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. They were actually showing up then. So we can have two opinions. We can falter between the opinion of the pulpit or the opinion of apostle or the opinion of man. You can, you can falter in the opinion of, well, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to do my own thing, or I'm going to come under order. But with these guys, they had an opinion. They wanted to follow other gods. We can follow other gods in our workplace. We can follow other gods in study. We can follow other gods in every area of our lives. It could be exercise. It could be in any area. We can follow other gods. We can make it our God. And Elijah said to pe the people, I am alone and left and the prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it and I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. So he's basically setting them up to show off God. I love it. Showdown. Then we'll go down to 24. Then you call on the name of your gods. Who have you been calling on lately? And I will call on the name of my Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said it is well spoken. We better not say anything. We know what Elijah can do. We've seen many of the things that he can do. We'll just watch what happens here. So he, they did what he said, and Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose those, that bull. But we'll go down to 26. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it, and they called on the name of Baal. From morning, isn't that what New Zealand's doing? Isn't this what the world's doing? From morning, evening till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. No one answered. And they leaped about, and they were fools for a while, jumping about, being silly, trying to get their God, Baal, who doesn't talk, who won't give you an answer, that alcohol won't give you an answer, that man won't give an answer, that woman won't give you an answer, that, that, that thing that you're being looking for is in the wrong place. And then, away comes Elijah, and, and, and as soon as it was noon, that Elijah mocked them and said, well, you might as well mock, eh? in that situation. Cry aloud for he is, he is God. Either he is meditating or he is busy or he is on a journey or perhaps he is sleeping. That's a bit of fun. And must be awakened. So they cried aloud and they cut themselves. How ridiculous. And as their custom was, they got the knives out and they started jumping around trying to get Baal's attention. A God that does not answer, a God that does not hear and a God that does not know. And when midday was past, they prophesied. They tried the prophecy thing. Okay, you're with Baal, but you're going to prophesy. Good gracious, they're a mixed breed. But anyway, so they got to the point where Elijah steps in, and he starts calling on his God. No one paid attention in their God, but wait, what happens when Elijah turns up and our God turns up? He says, go get three lots of water and pour it around so make it even more difficult for fire to burn this altar he puts the sacrifice on the altar and he has the three lots of water put around the altar we pick it up in 37 hear me O lord hear me that this people may know that you are the lord and that you have turned their hearts back to you again the whole thing was about them coming back to him then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now that's a statement right there. Our God, he is God, a God who sees, a God who hears, and a God who knows. 
Our God is a God who sees what you've been through, a God who knows what your past is, and he hears your pain, he hears your heart, he hears your life. A God that knows, a God that sees, and a God that hears. There is no other God. Some of you have been asking God, I, I, you, you're not hearing me. But you haven't sat long enough to listen to what he's actually trying to say to you. You're busy in our heads means you've just got too cluttered in your head or there's a demons are bothering you. So that whole thing of being, I've got the peace, I've got the power, I've got all of that in me. You know, have you got peace? If you ain't got peace, you've got problems. And we can sort that one out at the end. So we can get, get to that place. But we have a God that knows you. We have a God that sees you. And we have a God that hears you. We have a God that loves you. We have a God that knows every little detail about you. And we have a God that can bring fire. We have a God that can bring miracles. We have a God that can bring you an answer when you don't think there is an answer for that miracle that you need. But the amazing thing is that so the presence, the fire of God turned up. People turned to the Lord. They killed all the 450 prophets of Baal. And then along comes Jez, Jezebel. So Jezebel was the queen of this whole land. And Jez came along with one word to tell Ahab, who saw and witnessed the miracle power of God, brought one word to give to Elijah. I'm going to take your head off by the end of the day. He had the greatest victory, and then he ran. I believe the, it's one of the greatest tools of the enemy is to use someone's words against us. We've had our greatest victory. He should have had his greatest victory even with a word like that. He uses those words of, to, he brought discouragement to Elijah, and he brought um, defeat. He ran away into a desert and said, I want to die. He just had a miracle turn up. How often have we had a miracle turn up and then a bad report? And we go, oh, despair. I'm giving up being a leader. I can't do it anymore. I'm, I, I can't. You know, we just, we get one bad report, one bad word, one message. If I could count the messages I say that I've been receiving this year, I could have taken one of those words, write that, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore stuff, this, the backlash. Jez, get rid of Jez, Jezebel, fight the spirit. Yeah, get rid of Jez. It's like a hole of despair. So he was in the desert. And he was like going to say, kill me, die. I want to die. Just take my life. He said, I'm the only one. How often do we think, oh, I'm the only one going through this. I'm the only one in the whole wide world that's ever gone through this problem. Yeah, drama. <laughs> Stop the drama and get close to God. We can go from victory to defeat in one bad report. Witchcraft seeks to prey on the mind to get you into a passive mental state. It's the apostle's word there. That it, it tries to keep you passive and, I reckon, in bondage, give up. His whole thing is give up. Witchcraft tries to control the other person. You must do what I said you should do. Why didn't you turn up to that? Or why didn't you do that? There's something in behind that. Oh, you didn't, you know, there's a lot of... Well, my expectation is that you should do that. Or well, my expectation is the pastor should show up to that. Or well, my expectation is my legacy leaders should do that. Or my man up leaders should do that. And you can hear it in the voice. And you've got to shake it off. And, and listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to what God is telling you to do right now. His battle, I'd be worn out if I did everything and turned up to everything. So would pastors and our elders and leaders. His battle um, made sense, but his defeat did not. We will be in battles, we will have battles, but your defeat does not make sense today. Your defeatist attitude needs to be dealt with. I'm talking to people that give up. So he's, oh, the world, it's the end of the world. I'm just going to give up, and I'm going to go back to my old life. I hear that. And the worst place you can be is in defeat. 
get close to someone on fire, get the fire and start firing yourself up. You were born to win on the mountaintop and the valley. You were born, listen to me, to win on the mountaintop. I've been in the deepest valleys and I've won. And I've come out with some scalps, as David did. Remember, God sees, God hears, and God knows. You know, and he turned up, God turned up to have a wee chat with him and gave him some food. Some angels turned up and dropped some food off for Elijah. He hadn't eaten. He was basically going to die. He got provision from God. And then he said, you've got a 40-day journey ahead. Make sure you eat. And I want to talk to you, son. He came, he went to a cave and he came and, talk, and God came and talked to him. He came in the earthquake. This time he came in fire, but he wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the wind. He was in a small, quiet voice. So he had to get to a place to hear God again. And he said, son, you know, basically, what are you doing here? How did you end up in this place? And he's like, oh, I'm the only one. There's no one else. I've done the job, but there's no one else. He said, there's 7,000 others like you. There's 7,000 other prophets like him, he said. He just thought, he's the only one. I'm the only one that's ever gone through this much. It's time to deal with that defeat. It's time to deal with that, that I can't, I'm the only one out here. There's 7,000 of us in destiny, isn't there? We're all going through this. We all have those times, but we decide to overcome. Jesus showed up for the three boys and the Hebrew boys in the fire. He's going to show up in your most impossible situation in here. I, I sense this word for someone. Someone's in the most impossible looking situation, and God's saying, I'm going to turn up into it, and I'm going to show myself off in that situation. Grab hold of that. That's your word. He is bringing that to you. You know, and so Elijah ended up having to pass on what he was called to do over to someone else, Elisha. So he had someone else that took that mantle when he died. But he died in a blaze of going up in the chariots and fire. I couldn't, God, I couldn't think of a better way to go in, in some chariots of fire to heaven. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, just asking for a friend. <laughs> but, you know, so he, he left in a blaze of glory, but his defeat in between, it shows us that reality of that we can all feel defeated at times. We can all decide that we're the only ones out there. So I want you to, just, to get this in your head today. You're not the only one going through it. Yeah, that's right. Give God some clap because that's God. That's the word he wanted to get into you today is that you're not the only one. You have a God that knows, a God that sees, and a God that hears everything. And it's just incredible what he does do. So in Acts um, 2.17, it says, And it shall come to pass. In the last days, I believe we're going to see more visions. We're going to see more. We're going to have more dreams, and we're going to see greater breakthrough than we've ever seen. Hearing actually, before I go into that, hearing about over in Israel, right, a story of when the officer went down into one of those holes. I don't know if you've been watching Israel, but they've built all of these tunnels underground the enemy has, and they come out of these tunnels and they take people out. Hamas. So they're, they've built all of these tunnels underground, and the Israelites army, this particular unit's job was for one of the, the soldiers to go, imagine going down there not knowing what you're going to meet. So they went down there, uh, and it's always the commander that goes first, not the not the young soldiers in Israel, they put their, their best out first, so the commander leaves. So about four or five of them had gone down into the hole, and they couldn't, they couldn't, they were trying to get them by radio, and they couldn't hear, hear them, so they thought something had happened, so they went into the, it was over a house, so the hole was in the ground, a big tunnel under network in, in uh, Palestine, in that area, 
Gaza, isn't it? So, and they basically, there was a house over the hole where they were in, and the other soldiers rushed in because they were going to, they had, couldn't hear from their commander and the ones that went down, so they thought they must be a firefight down underground. So they, they came to go down into that hole, and there was a rabbi standing there by the hole saying, you can't go down there. He was, a, he was a rabbi with a, like a beard and everything like that. And he just saying, you can't go down there, you'll die if you go down there. You've got to get out of this house. And he said it quite a few times to when the soldier said, I'm going to move out of the way. And he went to put his hand and he went right through the guy. There's an angel standing there telling him to get out of the house and his troops to get far away. You're going to die if you stay here. Then the sergeant came out and the other troops and they saw the figure as well and, he, and his eyes turned into fire when he was talking and said, get out now. And they actually left that, um, that house and they got so many metres away and it blew up. So they all would have died if they stayed. This is happening regularly in the, um, the, the fight over against Hamas. God is turning up. With angels, there's other stories of angels turning up to warn the troops, God's people, to don't go there, don't go in that house, don't do that. God does that for us. He, so many times I've been protected by God because God's, I've put myself in some situations where I, things could happen because I've been walking too early in the morning and I've sensed the Spirit of God turn up and I've sensed the people, like, I've not been hurt by the person that's been around, so... Uh, getting a bit more, I don't push it to the limits like going too early in the morning anymore. But the yeah, the protection of God that we have angels walking with us, we can go. Holy angels, go and look after my family today. I, I have to wake up in the morning. Psalm ninety one, Lord, be with my family today. Protect and guard my family. We thank you, Lord, for that guard over my house. Just expecting those angels and to turn up in situations and expecting supernatural even more than you've ever seen. So Acts 2.17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see dreams. Sorry, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall have dreams. And on my men servant and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall pros- and you shall prophesy. The dreams are coming. I don't know if you've been dreaming more, but you've got to get to that place. He's trying to rob us of actually sleep, so we don't dream. He's trying to rob us of our peace, so we don't dream. And the dreams have been incredible. I've been getting more and more as I go along, and even my situation with. Um, Buying the house, I said, God, is this you? Because we're going to be joining my uh, daughter and um, son-in-law is getting married. They're getting married soon. They're going to be living with us with my grandchild. And that's a massive, like, you know, living all together in a house. So we bought this house to do this. And I, I really was seeking, God, is this you when we were looking? So one night I go to, I have the most amazing dream one night. And God's confirmation, plus I talked to my pastor about it as well, bring the dream to my pastor, and and everything that we're doing and saying, is this the fingerprints God on this? Before I just go by a dream, I want to talk to pastor about that, and what I'm hearing, what I'm sensing, what I'm thinking, and I sat down and I talked with my pastor, and it was incredible because the dream was, I was in my room, and I was spending time as I do with the Holy Ghost and the presence of God, and my whole room was filled with his presence. It was like, you know, that mist of the Holy Spirit when you see the Holy Ghost, and he just comes past as a mist. I've seen it in meetings, and my whole room filled with his presence and his glory, and in every other room in our house was one of our children, and Andy, and he, they were all in different rooms, and as I was praying, as I was just having my time with the Lord, the presence of the Lord went from room to room to room to room, and I, all night long I was going, Holy Spirit, get them, Holy Spirit, get them, Holy Spirit, get them. I woke out of my dream, Holy Spirit, get them, speaking it out loud. I went, whoa, like you wake up in the morning, wow, that was, that was a pretty good ma- massive dream. And, and it was like they were trying to go every corner of the house and they couldn't hide from the presence of the Lord. And I just thought, oh God, that's you speaking about this, about this home. And then there were some other things I said, God, well, I'm giving up my home that I built. Ooh, I keep moving. 20, 
months ago that I kind of chose everything. Well, God, could you provide me with a home that has got every detail like that? I would choose if I was to build it. So we walk into this home. We'd looked at many. I walk into this home. I'm like, oh, this is my style. Oh, this is quality. This is, this. oh, I could live here. I could see myself here. And I was walking through, wow, there's even more than what I've got now. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I had in my head, I wonder who the builder is. So that home was getting built the same time with our same builder as us when we were getting our house built. So God provided my very little intricate needs. If I want, oh, Lord, could you just supply this for me? If I'm giving up my nice little quiet spot all by myself to having the whole family and possibly even my son Chris is looking at moving down. So I'm like, I'd seen a vision of us all in the house and then when Matt comes back, I'm like, oh, Lord. Um, yeah. Oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that God is a God of the miracles. God, uh, he answers by fire. He answers by dreams. He answers by prophecy. He answers by your manner, God. He answers if you're willing to hear. And then there was a fight on even for that house. We had someone that was going to take it off on the last day it went unconditional. We, they were actually going to offer a, right through. They were ringing the real estate agent, wanting to take the house off us the whole time. But God kept them at bay, kept it at bay. Ours went unconditional first. The limb reports came through first. But the whole time they were going to overcut us, we would have been houseless. Oh, well, I don't care. But, yeah, they would have been a little bit of stress. But, you know, God hears, God knows, God sees. <laughs> so there's a story of what God's going to do even greater in the, in the end days. And he's releasing miracles and, and signs and wonders. So... So I actually had a word that for Sarah Wahoo, um, where is she? Ah, there she is. Hello. I had a word for you. God has said, I have restored your mind, and the enemy's plan was to take it. Joy has been released over your life. No more mourning, he said. No more mourning, no more tears. It was the enemy's plan to take your mind. But God says today, don't you let him tell you another, another second that he's taken your mind. Because God has restored it. God has given you a sound mind. Yeah. He says, I'm um, also going to lift up your household. That I'm lifting you up and I'm lifting your household up out of that dysfunction. That's the end. That's the end to it. The Spirit um, said that he's going to finish and lift you up. So, yeah, that's, that was the main thing. And Joe, where's Joe? Kiriona, up the back. Joe, when we were talking in the office this week, and I know you've taken on, like, doing the man up, and you had lots of questions and stuff, but Joe, what you've been through, you've wrestled with God. This is the word I got for you, Joe. You've wrestled through God with your life. You've, you've come out with a lump. You've come out with the very thing that you have thought maybe have disqualified you, has qualified you. That he's saying that you will always have that lump because it's a reminder, Joe, of what God is going to do through you. And your lump is to be shared with others. Your, your failure at times and your struggle at times is the very thing that's going to lift them up out of their dysfunction. Joe, God has an anointing on you to lift other men up out of dysfunction. <laughs> but that, they all always have, it's like that limp. I've got some too, where you limp because you've had to fight some things and you've had, and you've had some defeats. But out of it, I've come out stronger and out of it, the presence of God goes with you. So I just felt, use your limp. Use the limp. Use the thing that used to be weak. Use it. For others to get free. I use it all the time. My, my mistakes, my defaults, my, my struggles, I use it to help others come out of theirs. This is a scripture that I got uh, for quite a few in here. Jeremiah 31, 16 to 19. You've been waiting on some stuff and it hasn't come. But I had a word for a lot of you this morning. 
that this word is going to be applied. It talks about children, but it's also talking about your family members in this. It's talk, put it, apply, always apply the word to every part of your life. So Jeremiah 31 says, 16, Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. So that's basically what I felt. People that, you know, you've had that hopelessness and you've thought that when is it going to happen? And I feel like God's saying, refrain your voice from it. Stop crying about it. It's about to move. It's about to happen. It's already been set before the time that things are going to change and things are going to shift. So just get ready for that. Like, you know, demons like to take your mind. If you have possession of your mind, it's good. So keep your mind with peace. Keep your mind quiet. Get rid of whatever's cluttering it so you can hear his voice very clearly in these times. You don't want the clutter. You don't want to hold on to any baggage. You want to get rid of it so you can hear what he's got to say. And demons can't, well, flies can't land on cold elements. I was reading this this week. But they can they, they, sorry, they can land on cold elements, but they can't land on a hot element. So demons can't land on you when you're hot. When you're hot for God, there's no way in. So get that hot for Christ back again. The enemy wants to leave you with just the embers, just the little bit of burn, just a tiny bit of light in your eyes. But God wants to open you up and to give you the fullness of God today. Meth, all drugs, alcohol, violence, sexual perversion is a snake bite with the, with the teeth of death and a venom that will sink deep inside of you. It destroys household for generations and it takes everything. It particularly goes for the mind, particularly meth. It screws the mind so you can't hear from God. God restores, God heals, and God wants your mind healed today. I really believe there's a miracle from those that have been consuming meth over years, that God wants to give you your mind back. He wants to give you your healing back from the drugs. I've seen people get their memory back. I've seen people uh, to just completely restored in their mind. I've seen the intelligence of, like, I know Alicia, what he's done through you, and, and it was meth in your past, and the intelligence and the brightness that you carry and that God has restored your mind and healed it as if meth was never a part of your life. Uh, Alicia is a fine example of God restoring all and you've recovered all and you're recovering even more for your household. You're a woman of faith. You're a woman of tenacity. You're a woman on fire. And you're a woman that gets back up when you get knocked back down. So that whole thing, I, I give you courage. To, I give you, there's a, there's a soapen, we, we think too natural. We think way too natural. I'll grab the pill from the doctor. I'll go for the operation. I'll go for that. Fight with everything before you have to do any of that. Fight for your mind. Believe for the miraculous on your mind, the miraculous on a body part, the miraculous in your situation that you can't afford a house, the miraculous, the, he's a miraculous God. I've personally seen thousands free and getting their mind back. The, the fire will burn up addiction. Addiction says it's bigger than God. I've, I've talked to ladies, and, and, and I'm, I'm guessing there's men out there that think that the addiction's got more power than God. That's a lie from the pit of the demon that actually is perverting your mind. So that there is nothing bigger than God. Baal is not bigger than God. The God that does not hear, the God that takes everything of this world, it's smashed by the power of God. It's smashed by the fire of God. There's nothing the fire of God. There's nothing that miraculously could not be done because he's God. It's, it's out of the box. We limit him. We put him in our experiences and we run it through with our experiences. But I've seen too many fingerprints and too many miracles of God to think limitless. Or lim I'm limitless now with my thinking. I can think anything is possible with my God. We have been given authority and we've been given a power to do that. 
Luke 10, 19 says, I've given you power and I've given you authority to trample on the snakes and scorpions over the enemy's power. They cannot hurt you. You stay on fire, they cannot hurt you. You make the right choices, they cannot hurt you. You stay obedient and stay planted, they cannot hurt you. You're under authority, they cannot hurt you. They can have a crack, but you can stand on it. You can stand on that snake. You can stand and you can fight with another brother and a sister. Everybody who lives on fire for God is an excuse overcomer. I overcome every excuse that I can't do it to stay on fire with God. Conference starts fires. We get all excited about our conference. Oh, more fire, more power, more word. Choices keep the fire. How many lost the fire? How many are just going day to day and forgetting about who's around them and who needs saving? God's flame keeps me burning because it's heavenly. It's, it's a, so the flame of God, the presence of God, it's heavenly flame. It's for your marriage. It's, it's for raising your children. It's for decisions to make a ha- buy a house. It's for decisions for where you're going to live and do. The fire of God, getting close to God. Build a fire in your life. Keep it burning. Burn, baby, burn. Remember to burn. Keep burning over Christmas. Burn, baby, burn. Burn for Jesus. Burn for Christ. Don't just say, I'm on holiday. Burn. Keep, keep, keep alert for the enemy. Keep alert for the distraction. Keep alert for what could happen in your family. I'm alert for my family, wider family too. I'm alert in prayer. My prayer doesn't just stay here. My prayer goes out there over all my family in Australia. My, I'm alert, w- praying over my family, watching. We're to watch over our family. Acts, so this is where the fire comes from. We're going to finish in a minute. Acts 2, 3 to 5. 3 to 5. So this is, uh, is it 3 to 5? Yes. When, oh, I'll read the whole lot. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. And one that sat on each of them. So it came and speaking in tongues. If you haven't received that, you're going to at the end. And why we were at the end when we put your hands up. It's so simple. It's heavenly language that will keep you on fire. It's what I start my day with. I do 20 minutes. I changed it with apostles. 40 day thing. I, I start 20 minutes in tongues, open my word, and boom, it comes alive. So, 20 minutes of strong tongues in the morning, and then uh, re- reading the word, and then worship, and then another hour walking in tongues. So, I, I'm, I'm intentionally challenging myself to go further so that when I walk out of that secret place, you know what, I can come on a Sunday and gonna, I'm going to pray for this person, and this is what I'm praying for, and this is why I'm praying for every one of them come up to me. That's how, how, how detailed you can be. Or all day, one day, someone was on my heart, oh, Lord, help her. Help her to fight that demon that's chasing her now. Then I, I didn't even see what happened on Facebook. I, I messaged, messaged her. Facebook kind of cuts out the spirit sometimes. If you're just on there too much, it's just, uh, I'd rather hear God. So anyway, so I messaged her and said, are you okay? And then I kind of flicked on Facebook after that when she messaged back and said she wasn't. Oh, yeah, she put it up, but um, I knew before she told me, and then I turned up, because I knew this was a moment that I couldn't leave her, I needed to turn up, and that turn up, she was so grateful, she bawled at the door, she was desperate, she needed mum, right, she needed a mum to turn up, some of them just need us to turn up, and, and hug them, and let them cry, and then helped her from there. But the, the t- listening to the Spirit of God and being led by the Spirit of God, it's exciting. It's like, it, it's challenging. I had 20 minutes in between picking up my granddaughter and 20 minutes to see her. I picked up granddaughter, got her some, the lady some stuff from down the supermarket, took her back, gave the granddaughter a 
ice block, took the stuff inside, ran back to the car. You know, sometimes it's like that. But I'd rather be like that than sitting still. And my old, the church is doing this, or they're doing that, or they're not doing this, or like me, 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 over a cup of tea. But I'd rather be out doing the works. And I find when I'm out doing the works, people start getting mad at you because you've got the fire, because you're out there doing the mahi, and they should be. So they're getting, you know, you get that kind of like, you should do this, you should do that, you shouldn't do that. That's all religion, isn't it, when it starts getting like that. Well, you should be here for me, but you weren't. But I'm going where the Spirit leads, being led by the Spirit. It's exciting turning up when someone wants to go back on the pipe. And you're the answer because you've got the fire. You've got the authority. You've got the power to break that right then and there. So that person does not go back on the pipe and does not let their kids down. They're They're leading their kids to hell if they turn back. Listen to the Spirit. I'm challenging. I know some of you don't. It might not be what we're doing in Legacy. It might not be what you're doing in Man Up, but you've got someone. Someone like Catherine Collins who who went back into the same rest home as where her husband passed away, led several ladies over a period of time to the Lord that were next door to John. That is the mahi. It might not be going into a, a crack house, but it'll be going into a home into the home where these people are now in glory because she led them to the Lord. Every one of us have got someone in here that needs to know Jesus Christ. Every one of us has got a people group we can bring to church. Every one of us can show the love and the power of God to someone as we walk out of here today. As we go throughout our week, don't hold back. We have the fire. We are the defibrillator in the spirit. Do you know what a defibrillator we did a a first aid course, which was really exciting, because you were with some we were some awesome people. But the defibrillator gets the heart going. We've got a spirit of God that's a defibrillator to get people free. It's not a 10-step program. It's the power of God that I've seen. Yes, there's things that we have to do. Yes, there's things that we have to fill in our own lives. But we have the power to set someone free. You have, can you say it? I have the power to set someone free. I am going to this week. Good. Yeah. Thank the Lord. So he baptized them with tongues. He preached words fuel, with fuel of fire, and that's what you're getting today. Our God is that consuming fire. These are the last words because it is getting late. <laughs> Sorry. But you, to fuel the fire, praise, worship, giving, serving, prayer, and fasting. I've put fasting last. A church on fire goes beyond. So you go beyond when you don't want to. Do something and the fire will come. So it's the doing and going to someone and the fire. Being in difficult situations makes the fire even more exciting. The fire is a man up in legacy. The fire is your job. The fire is your family. Your fire is your, is your workplace. Your fire is your ministry. And it, the fire of God isn't just for here. It's out there. The fire really fires up when you're on the street and you're praying for someone that needs a miracle. That's what we're going to be doing next year. Legacy is going out on the streets. And we're going to have testimonies on the, uh, uh, off boards from some of our powerful leaders of what they've overcome. And we're going to talk with real people and get them saved. So that's what we're doing next year. There'll be fire. Yeah, so today, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, could we please stand up? If you haven't received... <coughs> excuse me. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit this morning and the fire of God, the power of tongues, I want you to come forward because we've got some awesome leaders here that can pray for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to receive the power of tongues. If you've actually if you've actually gone cold, come forward and get a fresh touch this morning, but do everything I just listed. Read the word. Spend time with him. Everything I've said this morning is fire. You've got to fire yourself up. I can't transfer it to you. You've got a word. 
I can pray for you to, if there's something, an issue that you're, you're holding back or you've felt defeat or you've felt discouragement. You've had a word from Jez and you haven't got back up. You know, Jez is a male or female. So if there's, if there's defeat or discouragement and you felt like you haven't been able to get up again, come forward. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if this God that I just presented to you that died for you and you don't know that person today, this is your opportunity to, to get to know him. This is your opportunity to know forgiveness. This is your opportunity to know his love. This is your opportunity for salvation. This is your opportunity to do a heart, heart to heart with Jesus Christ and, and receive him as your Lord and Savior today. Those brave people that come up right now, come up right now. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost and fire, you can receive it. If you're feeling defeated, come up. If you're feeling discouraged, come up and we'll pray for you. If you need to give your life fresh to the Lord today, do that. If you've slipped away, your heart's gone cold, come up and talk to us. We're here for you. We're here to stand with you. We're here to pray, but do the mahi, do the things that you need to do. So come forward. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit and your fire in this room. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and your fire upon the people. Father, fill these people in here. Fill them with fresh fire. Fill them with fresh glory. Fill them with your fresh presence. Holy Spirit, fire across this auditorium. Father God, to fire them. And tongues. I'll get the leaders to start praying for tongues. Shakara barakia ta ta ra ta ta ra kia ta 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 ra kia ta 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 ta. Shikara barakia ra ta 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 ta. Shikara barana Mariana. Shikara barakia ta 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 ta. Shikara barana marukia ta ta ra kia ta ta ta. Shikara barakia ta ta ra kia ta ta ta. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire power of the Holy Ghost. Do you want to come and pray? More fire upon your people, Lord. Father, pray. We just pray right now for your glory and your presence, Father God, upon the people in here. Refresh them. I break every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of Jezebel, every demon of hell that has had them bound. We bind and we break its hold. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now we command every spirit that shut them down. In Jesus' name to get off. In Jesus' name, Rabba kisa ta ta rakia ta ta Rabba kisa namara. Shia karaba rakia ta ta rakia ta ta. Shia raba rana na 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 na. Fresh fire, fresh fire. Righty ho, we're going to keep praying. If you want to go next door and have those hot chips and hot fellowship, or stay in here and pray for everybody, do that. But we're here for you.